Welcome back to the OHR Podcast. I am your host, Buckeye Boggs, back with another fan reaction video. This time, we're going to go to that whore known as Ann Arbor and take a look at those fans of the maize and blue as they are in full meltdown mode after their team, the Cheaters up north, won 28-18 to over Arkansas State yesterday. Things are not as good or as exciting for them as they anticipated this season being. And boy, oh boy, the reaction from that fan base on social media is just a gem. So we're going to we're gonna dive into this coping mechanism that everybody has. I ain't going to lie. This is Here's the thing. I've seen Ohio State fans overreact. And in a lot of ways, we overreact very similarly to what any fan base would. However, the, the delusion from this fan base is just mind-boggling, as you saw in the video I posted yesterday of how one of their particular uh, fans are trying to cope with the fact of the realization that the last three seasons are a facade, essentially, because of the, the advantages they had thanks to Connor Stallions, among other things. And so now reality is just smacking them in the face. They absolutely can't handle it. Let's dive into it. You're going to love it. So uh, as we continue to look here, I'm going to share my screen with all of you. And this is from a, a, a Facebook page, Michigan Football Fan Army. And they posted the final score. That's all they did. They posted the final score with a, a comment that says, Back to winning ways. Football emoji, fire emoji, and of course there's a picture of that defense celebrating like only they can after a 10-point win. And uh, let's check out the comments here, shall we? All right. This first one is from David Heath, and David says they should not be happy with their play. Anyone in the Big Ten will beat them. They look worse this week. So after, of course, losing to Texas in Week 2, they come back with an easy home game against Arkansas State, win by 10, and David says they actually look worse. Uh, then Rob, he kind of agrees with that sentiment from David, would have lost to any Big Ten team today. Uh, piss poor, for, poor performance. Dane says, I knew Michigan would take a step back this year, but this... This is embarrassing. Indeed it is, Dane. Uh, indeed it is. Chris, Warren needs to go. Oh, my. Just already just flat out just throwing the quarterback under the bus, huh? Just he's got to go. How about Tom's comment here? He says, the good. The running game with Mullins and Edwards and the first string defense. The bad. Quarterbacks, backups, play calling. Oh, we're going to the coaches, I guess. The ugly, stupid penalties, interceptions. Uh, that's probably true of just about any team that loses, Tom. Steve, we're in trouble. We are in trouble unless a quarterback change is made. Three interceptions just can't happen. No, they can't, Steve. That's, again, true of just about any team. Annette, the team is missing discipline. That's a key, big key to winning. Uh, mistakes are way too many. Jim kept those guys smart. You need to be smart to what Jim, as in Jim Harbaugh, kept his team smart. Or maybe in that it really helped to know what the other team was going to run every play. Just saying. Adam, every play for Orgy should have been a pass. You have to give him some opportunities where the defense doesn't just know. Um, so you're saying if the defense knows what the other team is going to run at them, it's not going to be helpful for that offense? Gotcha. Donovan, no discipline, no leadership. Gary, not an impressive win. In fact, they should be embarrassed. Not an impressive win. In fact, they should be embarrassed that they gave up 18 points. Arkansas State is a glorified high school team, and we beat them by 10. I will say it for the third week in a row, Davis Warren is not the answer at quarterback. So, again, not liking the quarterback play. 
Jeff, he says 28-18 is a win, but pretty pathetic win for a team like uh, Michigan. They should have slaughtered them. Good luck against USC. You're going to need it. Boy, Jeff sounds like he's kind of like disowning himself from the program. Uh, Michael says, absolutely a horrible win. Lots of mistakes all around, both sides of the ball. Better step it up and get smart real fast, or we're going to be embarrassed next week again. How about Brandon's take? We played terrible. We have no quarterback. USC is next, and I can't even imagine what the score is going to be, especially if Loveland is out. Uh, Joseph. Oh, my, Joseph. Grateful we didn't play App State today. Woo, Joseph with some with some thunder from down under on his fans. Robert, seems like for three years we have had have had stupid, undisciplined penalties. Oh, sorry. Seems like for three years we never had stupid, undisciplined penalties. Now having them every game. Is it the players or the coaching? Maybe both. Charles Pennington, sloppy, but it, it was a win. Too many interceptions, too many penalties. How about Edwards here? I hate to say it, will always be go blue. Do you hate to say that it'll always be go blue? Or do you hate to say the next comment? But we are in big trouble next week again, sadly. Obviously, Edwards thinks they're going to probably take an L next week. Uh, Josh Amick? Josh Amick. We will probably drop an, in rank because of this game. Uh, yeah, you probably should. Bruce, a win, but they should have kept it 28-3. to Tough schedule ahead. Go blue. Benjamin. Ah, oh, yes, Benjamin's comment is fantastic. Why are we celebrating beating a team worse than the Mac schools by only 10? Well, first off, Benjamin, I haven't seen, unless he's talking about the players in the picture, then I get you. This should have been a easy 30-point blowout. I don't know what we as fans need to do. We need to do it fast. If this is a, so, apparently Benjamin believes that the fans can make decisions here. I'm guessing. Okay, Benjamin. If Davis Warren starts against USC, we will lose by 30. If Wink Martindale, the defensive coordinator, can't figure out this defense with the DB coach before playing this USC passing attack, we're cooked. Since Wink has the most experience and he is the OG of the system, I think he should already be fired. What? Because I am watching the best corner in all of college football get targeted at least the last three weeks in one-on-one match matchups, and he's losing. Benjamin, that's because you weren't listening to the OHIO podcast. If you would have listened to the OHIO podcast, my co-host and I, Chris, have all been telling you guys for about six to seven months that your all-American cornerback, your top five pick in the NFL draft is incredibly overrated. We've been telling you that for months now. No one's listening to us. Guys, this is exactly who he is. He didn't lose to any, uh, he didn't lose to other teams wide receiver one for two years straight. And now he's getting beat. What happened? Connor Stallions happened. Makes a big difference. Hans. We may not win another game this season if we play like the odds is going off the deep end here. To go from the best to the worst would be devastating to this program and recruiting efforts. Hans, have you not been paying attention to your recruiting efforts the past two years, let alone this year? You guys haven't been recruiting anybody. The depth is not there. Michael, really, uh, really winning was, really winning was embarrassing. Really, winning was embarrassing. Gotcha. Uh, question mark shouldn't have been there. A win is a win, but it's like we gave up playing D in the fourth. Oh my, Mo. Mo, Mo, you, your pain in this comment. Rich Rod days are back. Oof. Oof, ouch. Polly, a win is a win. Growth comes with every win. Polly is the first positive comment we have made on this on this thread the first one we finally get to a positive and basically a win is a win growth comes with every win growth can also come from every loss to keep that in mind Polly Gary I'm glad we got the win but I'm not at all happy with the way things are right now with this program 
this team won't be able to compete with the better teams. I still don't know why they don't get off their rear ends with the NIL and start competing with the program's teams that are spending money. They shouldn't. They should have at least got a quarterback for the portal because what we have right now isn't good enough. When you look at what Ohio State is doing, ooh, going to the rivals, Oregon, two teams in our conference, and the other teams like Alabama and Georgia, Georgia, it just entirely pisses me off, and I am a season ticket holder. War Manuel better get a clue, or he needs to be replaced with somebody who is more up with the times. Again, I'm glad we got the win today, but still not happy with the way things are with the program currently. Go Blue. Gary, actually, this is a really intelligent comment because Gary's hitting at something that has been lacking within the Michigan program for a couple years now, and that's their NIL. And because of that, you are now seeing with the lack of depth that's on this football team, the recruiting misses that have happened, a lot of which is because of the lack of NIL. And so Jim Harbaugh was able to spin it that we're going to use what little NIL we have to keep the players that we currently have on the roster, hence the 40-some seniors you had last year in 2023. And, of course, Jim Harbaugh got out while the getting's good. Let's just admit it. He knew that this year was going to be bad. You can throw this on Sharon Moore. You can blame Ward Manuel for a lot of this. And I think Ward Manuel does have a lot uh, a lot the, that he's done incorrectly as an athletic director. Trust me. However, however, if, if Jim Harbaugh was still the coach today, I don't know how much better this is going to look than what Sharon Moore's got because these are things that have been, build, been building up for multiple seasons now which is one of the reasons why last year was a complete uh, a complete charade, a complete charade, a complete mirage to what uh, is the reality of your program, which is what you're seeing playing out right now. Mike, this is going to be a long and painful season. Bill, winning winning ways really what really winning ways really what a disgrace, not really what I call Michigan football. Hmm. Huh. Winning ways, really what a disgrace. I'm not sure what you're going after there, Bill. Uh, Jeremy, sloppy and undisciplined. Um, quite the contrast from last year. This team is in real trouble. Yeah. Anybody who's been following football was trying to tell you, Jeremy, your team this year was not the same team as last year. Just not. Wes, Wes says, I sincerely hope they don't consider this winning in any shape or form. Well, it is. You, you At the end of the day, you got the W, so it is a win, Wes. The rebuilding years really hurt. Always always wondering how Saban was able to stay away from those type of seasons. Yeah, Wes, that's because he, he just stacked top five recruiting classes year after year after year. Really, and for Nick Saban, it was top three and top two recruiting classes every single year. If he didn't win one, he was either second or third every single year in recruiting. That's how. It's not rocket science. Marvin, we are badly lacking a number one quarterback. Yes, you are. Absolutely. Richard, we're rebuilding. Everyone knows that. Hopefully we can get our offense to wake up. Too many bad penalties. Going to be a long season. Stay positive. Richard with the second positive comment in this thread, and he still admits that it's time to wake up, so they're sleepwalking, and they're they're not performing at a high level with the bad penalties, so they're not playing intelligently. Richard uh, is right on the money there. And I, you know what, Richard, good for you for having a positive attitude about this. Jacob, we are cooked when we play any Big Ten teams. Jacob thinking the next uh, remainder of the season is going to be rough. Paul, still a trash win, could have, couldn't cover the spread. Glad we won, but these are the games we should be bowing them out only to win by 10. That's correct, Paul. Jeff, this win was not pretty. We've got a lot to get right, right before USC comes to town. If not, we're going to lose. Yes, you are. Mark, we look so bad. Everything about the D uh, to the O. Looks bad. We better get it together or it's going to be a very long season. Yes, it will, Mark. Jacob, Warren nor Orgy are the answer at quarterback. 
I, I would I haven't dove into a lot of these replies on these comments, but um, yeah, a lot of quarterback hate from the fans right now for what's going on in Ann Arbor. That wasn't a win, and why do we keep playing war? <laughs> Steve asks. That's it was a win. It was an ugly win, but it was a win. And you keep playing Warren because he's better, gives you a better option than Orgy. That's why. That's what at least the coaches believe so. Don, he says, we had great O-lines for years. Now they can't run block or pass protect. What caused such a quick downfall? Maybe more should go back to O-line coach. Who is our strength and conditioning person? Our offense is ridiculously bad. Remember when uh, when Jimmy left, he took half of the coaching staff with him, including your strength and conditioning coach. Yes, it's going to take some time to uh, readjust. You guys are not going to be right where you were when you had 40 seniors and you knew everybody's plays, Don. Welcome to reality. Football's hard. James, I have been a Michigan fan since I understood football. So I write this as a realistic fan. Team is in major trouble against USC, and I don't think it's going to be good. Tony, that was an embarrassing win. Bill, how many yards and penalties today? A little, very few yards and a lot of penalties. Larry says, what a terrible win. Richard, what was the line? 22 points? Yes, yeah, it was, it was more, a lot more than what you scored, what the line was. Uh, Darrell says, good job, but still much work to be done. Was it a good job, Darrell? The rest of your fellow fan base doesn't think so. Hopefully things will be brought to light that will guide you to the winning ways. You can do it, Maize and Blue, through and through. Hopefully some things will be brought to light that will guide you to the winning ways. So what needs to be brought to light was that for three years you were cheating, and now that you don't have that advantage – and you don't have 40 seniors, and you don't have Jim Harbaugh there to kind of take the blows of all the cheating that you're doing, uh, reality smacking you in the face, Darrell. That's what's happening. William, initially I thought we would be an 8-9 to nine win team, but now I just hope for 6 or 7 total wins. Tuttle should be the court quarterback moving forward. He's really dropped his expectations. 6-7. to seven. Bill, Warren is not it. Larry, Wink Martindale is not the answer at defensive coordinator. His defense reeks of a Don Brown defense, lack of discipline, stupid penalties, and the D coordinator standing on the sideline looking lost and stupid. Woo! Larry, 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 buddy. Moore needs to just say, screw it and let Orgy play. play. Can't get any worse at QB. It would add another dimension to the offense as well. If Tuttle comes back, he may be better than both. If they lose another game, they will be out of the playoffs. At that point, put the freshman Jaden Davis and get his butt ready to be the future. Start Mullings. I know that Moore has the hardball mentality of uh, owing the next man up a chance, but Edwards has been a disappointment for the last two seasons, minus OSU in 2022 and Washington last year. It's actually true, Steve. He did. He did play well against us in 2022 john we need a gunslinger does davis qualify or do you must be really bad a long year ahead demariel most teams after they win a chip after they win a chip a garbage because they lose all the stars it will take al most teams after they win a championship are garbage because they lose all the stars it will take a bit to get the talent back and get a high profile coach Moore is just a fill-in till that happens. Ooh, Sharon Moore just filling in the gap. Well, he might not even be the coach by the end of the year if the NCAA hands down more penalties and sanctions. Um, most, most national championship teams are not garbage the next year, however. You need to do some more research on that. Devante, that crap was weak as you know what. I'll take a win, but... Um, uh, we're not going to read that comment. Too much... Cursive slang. Uh, Matt's just like go blue. <laughs> Marcus, another garbage game against a bottom feeder. USC will put a beat down on them like Texas did. Warren is horrible and orgy can't throw at all. No discipline. Too many penalties and turnovers. Moore might be way over his head, but he got his contract. It's not looking good, and it may get worse. That's right. I forgot about that. Moore signed his contract this week, so he's he's got his money now. 
uh, that was should have been funny. Hey guys, I'm ready to sign my contract, and and uh, Warren's like, yeah, let's wait off on that. <laughs> Todd, not pretty, but we knew this year was a rebuild, and it shows through three games. Actually, Todd, most of your fan base did not admit that this year was a rebuild. You need to go back and look at how all of you were talking in the off season about this season. Okay, you all didn't think it was a rebuild. Too many questions and inexperienced players learning this season. Justin says, at best, this is a 6-6 six and six team. Derek is, one word, disappointing. <laughs> Thomas, a win is a win. Hopefully Tuttle is ready by next week. Mullins looks like a bell cow back for us. Fingers crossed that Loveland isn't hurt too bad. And if that is, and that is a big if. We can improve enough and stop the mistakes and find a way to beat USC. There's a chance we can still have a decent season. If we don't, if we get blown out, then we are in trouble for sure. Yeah, next week is a huge game for you. That's right, Thomas. Oh, it looks like a Texas fan just chimed in. Emmanuel. Why does he have a Texas logo? Must have lost. Did he lose a bet and had to change his profile to a Texas logo? <laughs> oh, I love that. I, that happened to me once. Emmanuel, we have to be better on our defense and, and onus. And offense, plus we have to fix our interceptions and try to get someone else as our quarterback. Oh, man, seeing that with the Texas logo is hilarious. PJ, are you serious? This was a disaster. They'll be lucky to win five games this year. Oh, he's even going under 500. Becky with another go blue. Jeff Johnson, you guys weren't even off-season champs. You're definitely regular season chumps, though. <laughs> Dude, is Who's Jeff a fan of? Let me read that again. You guys weren't even off-season champs. You're definitely regular season chumps, though. Jeff, you a Buckeye fan, dude. That's hilarious. D. Kurt says an embarrassing win. Ryan Jenkins really wanted to see 40, but don't apologize as long as you win. So Ryan is one of those positive people. Boogie says after that performance, we're definitely headed back to the natty. <laughs> LOL. <laughs> so, Boogie bringing some com com comedic relief to this thread. Well done, Boogie. There you go. Uh, Maria with another go blow. Kathy says go blow. Bill says go blow. Robert Hang Hangstrom says big deal, one by ten. Jim, if you if you call that winning ways, you fans are hard up. Donald says Michigan did not open the playbook today. They better do it next week. If not, the score will be 31-17. Yeah. Amy, go blow. Mike Mike Hennel says beat Southern Cal. Not if you play like that, Mike. Bearded Browns podcast. The Bearded Browns podcast. Wow. Never heard of them before. The Bearded Browns podcast. So Cleveland Browns podcast. There you go. Three picks. Come on, man. <laughs> Ken, still have a lot of work to do. Steven says go blow. Wayne, excuses. UM is rebuilding after cheating and got caught. Makes sense to me. Woo, Wayne. Wayne bringing out the thunder. Found his way in there somehow into this thread. And they didn't, they didn't delete it. Danny Gordon says too bad the second string defense gave up two scores. So Dan, again, Danny's looking at this as a, as a like um, cuff, a cup half full thing here. Hey, we were doing, we were fine. It was twenty eight to three, or whatever, and uh, the second string defense late in the game gave up a couple scores. That's how he's looking at it. Um, problem is, is that, de that second string defense is only one play away from being your first string defense, based on who gets hurt, Danny. So it's important. We still have work to do. Got to get better each game, says Russell. Um, Daryl says, not much for USC to look at. Brian, a long way to go. Another go blow. Bobby, we're in serious trouble. I think you guys get the hint of what's going on with this, with the, the fan base here. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to push this on too much further. I hope you Got as much of a kick and enjoyment out of that as I did watching this fan base completely melt down and face reality. And the next step is them to just to take one more step back and look back and then start to question the last three seasons. 
And there's this beautiful meme out there that someone has posted of them holding a national championship and saying, and saying that because of what happened in 2023, I can go to sleep at night, not worried about what's going on in 2024 because I have my national championship. But what if the NCAA comes a knocking and they want to take that away from you? I'm not saying they will, but it is a possibility. Can you imagine what this fan base will do if that were happen? Like, share, subscribe. Let me know what you think in the comments section below as we enjoy down here in Columbus everything that is going wrong in the old Michigan Twitter sphere and social media as their fan base completely, their faces melt off from the fantastic play of their leaders and best on a weekly basis. Big game next week for them, USC. We will be with you all week long with live shows. We've got content. We've got previews coming your way as we continue to march forward and back into the season after Ohio State's week three bye week. We welcome Marshall into town in the last tune-up game before Big Ten play starts. So a lot of things, a lot of things there for us to sink our teeth into this week. Not going to want to miss that, including our live show Sunday evening, 8 o'clock. The Buckeye Boys, Tuesday night, 8.15. Call-in show Thursday at 8 o'clock. All of that coming your way, plus videos in between all week long as we prepare you for the remainder of the season, guys. Till next time. OH!